Hello everyone, it is Amo for your weekly planned P4G analyst going over the matchup of this week. We are just three weeks away from playoff and the standing are still close to determine whoever is in. Beside only three people being confirmed as of right now being Joey, Bokiem, Shaco King and Jeriki. All three of them are confirmed. But the remaining spot are still open to us, to almost everyone. So without further ado after this, an actual intro for once instead of just jumping immediately to it. Well now we're gonna just jump into the matchup themselves right now. So the first matchup. Playmore versus Ellie. If I remember what happened last week, I don't have <laughs> the longest memory. Yeah, right. Uh, Playmore fought Jack but lost, while Ellie fought Callum and also lost this week. So, of course, each wants to jump back onto a win. So, on Playmore's side, so from what I'm looking, uh, also from what I'm gonna think that Ellie is gonna bring. I'm thinking the likes of Tenor Cruel is in, uh, is pretty obvious because Ellie, even though she has yet to bring rain once, it would be funny if she didn't br if she doesn't bring Polytoad now either. But I think it's fair for her to bring rain this time. I think it's pretty strong despite ten a Tenor Cruel because of how strong the water move can go here. It's it's just like Tenor Cruel and then the four time week Altaria assuming it doesn't Terra. And if it terras, there's no, you know, uh, no longer what it resists. So I'm gonna mention the cruel because it's a first line of defense, which is rain. Because, you know, bird typing, it has rain dish to heal itself in the rain. Yeah, I can also use, uh, uh, like, rain boosting move as long as, as there's not a cacturn, but cacturn has to be worried about switching if, it's, if it hasn't terrad yet. I also like the Gold Ventula here because that Sticky Web can be very useful versus a Rain Team that has no removal to slow down to uh, Float Soul and Quillfish to allow a threat like Scarf Superior to work, potentially. Because there's a Moltres, so Superior will struggle a little bit offensively, but you can use it as a way to revenge kill stuff, like, or I mean, uh, at least Rain Threat, at least. I mean, it's mainly Float Soul, like, Quillfish will resist it. Or why wasn't you just glare them, which is also a good move, especially to punish the Moltres. And like also the Porygon 2 here, which is pretty bulky. But you do... You like, if you're running like a Trace Porygon 2, you have to be careful to not like a Trace the Polito's Drizzle if there's no more rain. It is what I have to guess to be worried about. But I still like it, like it's pretty tanky, it's just Lucario that really like... Uh, does the biggest amount of damage unless it's like rain boosted float soul. Crocodile is still it's still good. Like it can uh, check Jolteon as long as there's no more rain or at least absorb the, the electric move to then potentially swap in something kind of like superior to take a weather ball instead of a thunder. Which is better at least you won't get like paralyzed on the switch if it's like thunder. But besides that, I can just provide rocks and just some good knockoff if needed. And also, I like Hatter in here offensively. Like, uh, only Fairy Resist or Moltres, and if Captain Terra slots into a poison type. So, a Trick Room Hatter in can be interesting to have. Or, like, some kind of maybe Focus Sash. Because if it, there's no hazard, then, ha then Hatter will be able to trade one for one at worst. So that's why I was able to find on Playmore Steam that thing was better. As on Ellie, I didn't mention the rain. I'm gonna say that this will be the week of Ellie bringing actual rain. So we're gonna see Polytoad, Full Soul, and Isuin Coolfish. You have the rain, you have your Swiss swimmers. I like the old trace as it gives you your check to Superior and have some powerful hurricanes in the, in the rain. I also like Lucario just to be able to punch holes while well, it's a good priority if needed. You don't get slowed down by Crook's Intimidate because of inner focus, but you do have to be careful of Crook nonetheless because it's naturally faster. Unless you go like Big Brain, you don't run inner focus instead of Adrenaline Orb if you know Crook's gonna be Intimidate. 
That would be pretty funny. <laughs> and then last, if Crook is really a problem, I did put Whimsy Cut, but you have to be careful about a gong shot. But uh, outside of that, you do resist a stab. I still think I'll give it to Playmore's Edge more than Ali. But, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if she pulls up uh, on top either. So yeah, I close match up just like how we like to see because we don't know. You're not 100% sure which side will will win. I mean, it's Pokemon. It's never gonna be uh, never one-sided, unless on rare circumstances. But yeah. All right. Next, Jeriki versus Callum. Jeriki being one of our only undefeated players, while Callum is on a little streak after his win against Ali. So here. Obviously, Isui and Gujra is, like always, very good. Just, I mean, for the same reason. Typing, base stat, I'll repeat again and again, but that's, a, that's what makes Gujra good in low tier. I, so, I also think this is a, car, a like a carbon game. I like his bulk here. I think I'm gonna uh, prefer Terra Fairy here, so that way you keep an extra to Regidrago. You still have strong body press. You do have a rock stat to hit Skeletor. Dirge. Not hard, but you do get some damage off of it at least with Power Gem. Not that you want to stay on it because you don't want to get burned. Unless you are like Calm Mind with Power Gem, which can also work. I believe Carbon gets uh, Earth Power naturally. I think I'm not sure. I don't want to check because I just want to record this. But I think it does get Earth Power. Also, Tornade is here. I did mention with uh, from the matchup with Ellie how Kellum doesn't like to run into flying type attacks. So, as Tornade, this can be hit or miss. Well, it can be a really big hit. It, it, well, a very, yeah, big hit because, again, no good flying resist outside of River Room, which will not appreciate Eat Wave despite Filter because it's not that specially bulky unless it runs AV. So, yeah, Tornado is pretty strong. Miss pretty is pretty decent here. From what I, uh, I was able to find because it's I mean it's not I mean it, it take a hit from me and shout like it's just it's gonna get baited into a, a knock or U-turn on the switch, which is gonna be annoying. But at least he'll be able to survive the hit and potentially offer some support with like rocks if you don't want have to want, uh, have them on car bank. But like you can have I mean, a trying to get in language later in the game. I also like the Palmot here offensively. It's just the Skelet Dirge, but Palmot has knockoff, so you can knock off the Skelet Dirge's boots to make it cripple to the rocks. And last I put Gligar because it's one of the better Pokemon to uh, versus Rev uh, Rev Room. Since it, it's fine for the poison type, you know, it has the earthquake. You have to be careful of Magnet Rise and be set up further. But one from a look at it, it does steal and po because uh, actually yes, yeah, steel and poison. I mean, I mean, uh, steel and ground seems like all Kalon could run, so he could have in fact uh, Magnet Rise. But if Jeriki adapt properly with his Gligar to be able to still check uh, even Magnet Rise room with like. I mean, I don't know what movie you would like to do that. <laughs> but as long as you keep this in mind and does find a way to still deal with Vroom, you'll be you'll be fine. And then on Callum's side, I like the Mian Shell offensively. It dies Palmot and is slower than Tornadus. But outside of that it hits pretty hard, like like I, like I mentioned, there's the mess print that you can just annoy with some knockoff and U-turn. Beside that, I also appreciate the Sylveon here. It's just, there's only Mock that can really take its hit. Beside that, you can just otherwise, like, you know, heal. Or just try to be offensive. Like, since the Mock is the only resist, either have psych at least Psychic for coverage, if it's still, like, like non-Terra or Terra Poison, you have a way to hit it for damage. Then I also like the Lapras here because it's stuffed Vaporeon hard. Since it won't, even if you just to be combined Vaporeon, you won't be able to hit Lapras too hard. 
and Lapras can also have Perish Song to just straight up say no to Vaporeon trying to set up. I also like the Hunch Crow here because just, I mean, Jeraki does have a Carbink that does resist both a Hunch Crow stab. But if uh, Carbink does Terra, then it's no longer, it no longer resists flying. So those Brave Root can really hurt. And, or you can just be like uh, Mian Shai who just force switches just to U-turn out of here because it, Unscrew did get U turn this generation. Then I also, also. Then, yeah, Sarvina also is pretty strong. It has the coverage it needs. Yes, grass move. Yes, fighting move. Ice move. Last can be like U turn or knockoff, depending what you want. Or even spin if you feel like it. But yeah, I like this Sarvina here. And last, I put Skelly Dirge. Wasn't sure on who to put last. But I, I feel like. Uh, yeah, like it can still hit this. It can. <laughs> you can tell I'm just. I was just trying to find which Pokemon that were better. Do enough. Did like throughout analysis of the matchup. But yeah, even though there's a Typhlosion, a Torch Song is still good because again, yeah, yeah, it's still good. Otherwise, you can just use Shadow Ball because there's no normal type. It, the dark type is Crawdon, which is slower than Scarlet Dirge and doesn't have good speed death. So at worst, you can just spam Shadow Ball, indeed. It then have a Torch Song for the Vaporeon, and then Vaporeon has to be careful about using Water Move to not accidentally heal the Lapras. Or, you know, Scarlet Dirge can just have, some, can have, I don't know, like Sunny, like, it can be like Stab, Slack Off, Sunny Day. I, I could see something like that. Otherwise, you can just rely on Lapras to deal with Vaporeon otherwise. I also think this is a closer matchup than the Playmore Ellie one, but I'm gonna give the slight hiss to J. Ricky. I do like his threat more compared to Callum, but again, it's it's very close. Who knows? We'll, we'll see if J. Ricky will be able to keep his, his uh, undefeated status. Even though I, I know he did agree that there were times he definitely shouldn't have won certain matches. Well, who knows? Maybe you'll you'll get blessed again. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Next, Gravy, aka Jack versus Uzi. Jack won his match versus Playmore, while Uzi faced the demise of Petcharunt. Which didn't really he didn't really patch around all over the place. He just you know it was Petcharunt behind screen. Anything behind screen with his policy would have been terrifying to face. It just happened to be Petcharunt. But yeah, back to the matchup, Gravy. I like the Raikou here. The ground type is a Santa Conda that you can just go, and the grass type is a Decidueye which you can just Shadow Ball. You don't kill them for full, uh, and there's also a the, hey, the Dunspar has a special wall, but beside that, it can put some pressure while also having some debut, some uh, very annoying status to deal with unless you have a cover cloak on. But I, 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 I think it can be decent. Like, just some. You just try to annoy early game, that's what I would say. Yeah, early game Raikou seem better, you just try to annoy everything. And after that, I look at things because this can be a Velusa game. Like, it's stab are very strong because it has nice slash to cut through Slowking. It could go fill it away with some bulk, and then I also have Citrus Berry to ensure it can. It stays alive after it's set up. Because sure, it's not the bulkiest Pokemon in the world, but with some bulk, and if you know which is what you can set up, that, that can be a big game changer. Yes. Then, of course, I'm gonna. There's the duo of Alucha and Armor Rouge, which I think they're pretty strong. I'm not gonna mention the Indeed here. I don't think it's needed. Because you have the likes of Sand Slash, a lot of with Ice Spear that can be annoying. And Grim can still sub uh, priority screens. Or even can just turn away with Lucha because Lucha isn't uh, grounded. But instead, I'm gonna put the likes of Sinistra that can be pretty annoying. <laughs> Especially if you try to go the extra mile being itemless for Protoga the Sejuai. Or you can just be, you know, Cassie Berry to just absorb a ghost move in general, which also goes to include Hunter. And then last, I didn't know who to put to pick last, so I just went with Pheasant Deputy as a poison type. Like, it's not that good into Okie Doggy, 
Well, I guess you can try to annoy with like early Rocky Helmet and like, you don't beat Oki though, yeah. Otherwise, you can just try to set up uh, some st uh, some poison status, like forcing Okidoki or Senakonda and just U-turn out. That's what I would say that Pheasant Deputy can do, because that's what it can do best. Or, you know, you can, you can try Source Dance if you feel like it. Which, okay, it's not that terrible. Player of can do good damage. You have the double kick for the Sand Slash. And yeah, Pheasant is even faster than Hunter. It's just slower than Delphox. Then maybe just put it by a berry. That could be a, in a, a late game and cleaner as well. Like, there's a lot of options for for Jack. And then on Uzi's side, Okidogi is a pretty strong threat indeed with his staff combination because his poison type is part dark, so it's neutral to fighting. And his ghost type is part grass, so it's neutral to poison. So, yeah, that's a big threat. I still, I still like the Tissi Jui here. Because again, it's not buying to Raikou, it's really just Shadow Ball it has to be worried about. But outside of that, you can just try to have some Shadow Sneak for R Rouge and Lucha if needed. Then I like the Slow King because... I mean, in theory, it's very good into Armor Rouge. But you just have to be careful to not uh, be in a position where you think Slow King is always safe. Because there are times where Armor Rouge can straight up blow past Slow King. Either with just like a strong... Uh, Coverage energy ball, or we just with straight up like some combine weakness policy with a powerful stored power if Sloking is not careful enough. So, yes, so he has to be very, but yeah, he has to be careful with Armor Rouge nonetheless. Delphox, pretty strong threat. That's another another reason why I didn't mention uh, Indeedee because then Delphox is even stronger psychic move and also has powerful fire coverage. Or what psychic will not work against, or not at least not work against very well. You could make the reason to be expanding force, but I do prefer psychic because it's just it's strong enough and it's better if there's no terrain. Then I'm gonna put the grim now because you have some safety with the double screens that can be very good. And then last, I put the dun sparse for utility. I like having rocks here because you want to to punish Rouge by that not. Uh, doesn't have boots. Yeah, you can just spam Glare. You could make it your Raikou uh, check because it has the spell to take it. And it has, it has the move also to deal damage to the Raikou back as well. Again, very close. But I'm gonna go just a little bit towards Jack. I feel like he has multiple Pokemon to facilitate an endgame. But again, it's close, so you never know. That's just my prediction. Alright, next is Nate, Gavinate, and Kyle. Which I believe week 5, Gavinate fought Thomas and won thanks to the Cobalion's uh, body presses. While Kyle fought... Who fought? Kyle fought again. He fought Nexus. And Nexus won, right. But yeah, so for this week... On Nexus side, yeah, Primarina does look in fact like a nuke because as you can see, Cal did some transaction on his team. It looks very different. He dropped the likes of uh, Seru Ledge and MB Palm. I know he dropped more, just those I remember off my head. I don't want to go into the tra transaction themselves. You just see right here, it's new team because it's week six. That's the last week to to ever have changes towards any team. So the coaches that could, the changes. And I just realized that Nate also did some where he just swapped his tier fours and then one of his tier five. Yeah, next up. Like I said, Primarina, Anouk. Cobalion, I also like it with his body press set. Like, like body press, Calm Mind is good because you use flash cannon for wheezing and Palsen, the rest you can just body press. Elmer Mug's not bad. Sure, there's Garganacle, but the knockoff is still valuable. And I would say Yuxi is also decent into Garg because it takes it well. It's not worried about body press. And I believe you put the cover cloak on it for the Salt Cure. But also, I can Pokemon that can set up rocks. Pyroar? 
pretty sure offensively as well. I would say this is a Terra Grass game, so that way you can uh, uh, hit the Garganacle for bigger damage. So basically you have like stab on fire, normal and grass, which does look pretty strong here. And then let's put Mudsdale for its physical hit taking ability, which is good versus the likes of Arcanine. I have to be worried, have to be worried about burn. But I guess you can you can try something like rest talk if you feel like it, or you could just be like, you know, like earthquake, smack down every, every slam, or you can, but yeah, I still like it to have something which is Arcanine. And then on Kyle's side is new tier one Pokemon Berescuta. Sure, there's no like Drizzle Polito because of how the the tiering went. But well, I can still like have manual rain if Cal feel like it. He did uh did that versus Nexus, but this time he has a Paris Cuda to do this with. And he has poison jab to hit Primarina for super effective damage. The rest you can liquidation it. Next, I like the Arcanine like I mentioned, which does look pretty strong and will risk being annoying because it's just pyro that can absorb it well. Balsan, a good hit taker. It's not versus Cobalion, you just have to be careful about like potential calm mindset. Or I was like the uh yeah, I put both Bombardier and Zep Striker, so double Terra Captain. Of course, if we bring Zep Striker, then it'll be the more likely of the two to Terra. But even without Terra, it's not looking too terrible. It's Brave Bird. Does it next seem pretty hard because his new electric type is the Morpeko, which is anyway in one of his Terra Captains, so if he brings more Pico and it's not Terra Electric, he'll take, well, neutral damage from Prey Bird or Super Effective because Terra Grass. And then I, I put the Bronze on because I try to find anything that is okay to take a fit from Prem. And I find Bronze on at, at best. Like, I guess there's also Blossom, which can also be annoying. But... Yeah, so, yeah, either Bronze Dog or Blossom. I'm getting this one to Nate because I like the I like Primarina and Pyro more over at Chaos Barrier's Cuda. So not as close as the previous game we mentioned, but I would say it's like it's close in like similarly to playing more Ellie with like a 60-40. But who knows? We'll see which coach as their changes be more effective this week. Alright, five. Which is Thomas versus Joey. So yeah. So yeah, so we went over the matches are uh, the previous of week five match already with the result. So now they're fighting. On Thomas' side which needs a win after what happened the two previous weeks. Luckily, I think Gator can be Quite a menace if it gets to attack. Like its speed tier is not that great, even if it wants to go like Dragon Dance, because Joey has so many fast threats, so Gator might not be able to set up and sweep. But it said that I I know I'm not bringing like uh, you know like uh, like I, like I mentioned before like just testing into like this because again it's just like it, all this is just theory building. But I did see that special gator was actually quite interesting here. I ran because like I said, like uh, agility, muddy water, ice beam and focus blast can hit pretty hard. Sure gator is a lower special attack, but that way you don't get intimidated by int by incineroar, you bypass Petron's high physical defense. And besides water ice fighting is pretty strong. Also, also muddy water because it has a secondary effect, so it goes stronger than hydro pump and more accurate than hydro pump as well. So it's a much better move to have. And agility because, well, that doubles Gator speed. So if Joy doesn't have any more like fast Scarfer like Intellion or Wyvern, Gator could run away with the game. In the right uh, position because after all it's Gator, it has good bulk. And yeah, it's, it's special attack is 79, which I believe is higher than Pokemon like Needle Queen, which regularly runs like offensive, like sometimes run offensive set, but with a lower special attack than Gator in comparison. 
Alexander Dantvan for his high bulk, the ground typing into the Reggie Lucky matchup. Technically, in theory, Dantvan can threaten Petra Run with a ground stab, but I'm talking from experience, that's not enough. <laughs> that is really not enough, and Petra Run cannot afford to be physically defensive this week because he has to deal with a whole ass Raptor, which I'm gonna measure next because it's Raptor. But also because I think there could be like a combo between uh, Raptor and Zoroark. Because again, Thomas is one of the, the cultures that did uh, changes. As you can see, as a lack of Zoroark is doing the situ right. And then Golem with a... Like, I mean, he already had Golem. I, I meant to say that he has a new Terracat and with Golem being Dusk Noir this time. And like, if you want to uh, check Raptor with Petra around, then you have to be careful that... Wait, what if it's Zoroark? What if... I'm gonna switch my pressure on into a dark pose. I don't want that. So you'll have to be very careful about it. Then last I put Melovela as a respectable uh, special attacker. That's uh, also good special bulk for Joey's faster threat compared to Thomas. And last I put Cool Fish because spikes are pretty good to have to weaken his team down. So yeah, that's for Thomas' side. And now for Joey. Well, Petra Rant, obviously, I, I don't I don't think I need to explain more. It can take hits from Raptor, like, Choice Band does hurt, but I mean it's Choice Band. This means uh, that your fast movement will, will be able to go before it, if it's banded. Then, next, I cannot afford to say this, but I was thinking of a cloth set that can be very, very devastating for Thomas to fight. Yeah, it was a, it was a Anger Shell with the Terra Grass, with the idea is that like, you get the Terra early with Cloth to become a Grass type. Actually, no, no, no. It was it was Spectrant switching into Star Raptor if you predict uh, Star Raptor right, and I would potentially go for a, I would go for a U turn, and Spectrant being eject button so it'll get ejected out before uh, Raptor goes in, go into Cloth. Have Cloth Terra into a Grass type as Terraptor U turns again, drops you below 50%, activate the Anger Shell with the item being Weakness Policy, and just Trailblaze on the switch, which gives your Cloth plus 3 attack and plus 2 speed in one go, and you're a Grass type. So, and then your other move will be like, you know, Stab, then like Temper Flare for this AGI, then like. I, I can't afford to say this because I know Joey didn't brought this, but <laughs> I mean, I, I guess I shouldn't, I shouldn't spoil it. <laughs> Here, here goes me talking about my ideas. But yeah, I, I thought this set was very cool. I mean, it, there's a lot of requirements needed. Like, it has to be Star Raptor staying on Club, not fearing Scarf. And also, it has to be Star Raptor going for U turn, not, uh, not uh, Brave Bird. But yeah, I thought this was a funny set. In theory. Then beside that, Hera Crush can punch hole. Sure, it's a Dusk Noir, but that's in a Miss Magus. But it's still a good Scarfer. Incinero is also good. In my opinion, like it's going to Mellow Elida, into Tinkaton. If you can predict the Zorark, it is also good. Then Intel is also pretty menacing because the water resist are. Gator and Quillfish as well as types, which doesn't have the best special bulk, no longevity. And then the Sage UI can just get Air Slash to death, or Air Cutter, as we saw him run on week 2. And you don't have to necessarily fear like a Scarf or Troublous boosted the Sage UI, because Inteleon can be EV to be faster than plus 1 speed, max speed, the Sage UI, or Scarf, whatever. And then last, I put Rebumpy, because the web is useful, you have a Ghost type to burn a spin. To make your faster Pokemon even more threatening while limiting Gator speed. So, again, non bias at all. I'm gonna give it to Joy because, again, Petcheron is just dummy. And also, he's on, he's on a killing streak. And, Th and although Thomas wants the win, it's not gonna be an easy opponent to defeat at all. But yeah, we'll, we're gonna see how he did with Petcheron. Uh, well, again, because he, he did. <laughs> that's. that's the, I can tell it's not the first time you ever fought Petra around in a moment that he needs to win. <laughs> I, I, I like you, Tom. 
Just don't take it. Don't take it personally. Okay, we're still friends. Wait, oh, I'm using right now. In one second. There you go. All right, Nexus and Shuckle King. And Shuckle, yeah, Shuckle, which is the only fight we didn't go over yet from last week. He won versus Drooby, if I remember correctly. I mean, yeah, of course he did. He's undefeated. I just meant to say that I think it was Drooby that he fought. But yeah. So on Nexus aside, I'm gonna go with the Entei. Ente. I didn't do it last week, but I did use it very well last week, so I'm gonna mention it here this time. There's a Milotic, so you have to be careful about it. But if he press correctly, that could make a good game for Bloom. Like if he just switch correctly into the my Milotic switching. And he can also go the extra mile by being like, if he wants to be like poison heal to be uh, skull burn proof. Then I like the uh, executor here because it hits pretty hard. And I would say Terra still is the better Terra because it gives you a Gardevoir quote unquote check. Like it's, it will get still hit hard by Gardevoir's coverage and also it needs to Terra. To be able to resist Gardevoir's tab. But yeah, I like it offensively. I like Espeon because we need a good speed tier here. It's speed tight Tauros at worst. And then last, I just put Swampert because I think it's Earthquake can be quite beefy to switch in. It's just Mandibuzz and Kragano that are immune. And you can just have, you know, flip turn for that. Just get out. I was on Shuckle's side. God of War pretty terrifying. Don't care that there's a fortress of a Bastiodon. It's still God of War. It's still terrifying to face. I like the Tauros here for its strength and speed. Especially because, it, I mean, it has the coverage that it needs for the matchup at all. And again, you don't care about uh, Nexus is still type because Tauros is just strong as a good speed tier. It, it, you can easily just wear down Nexus' team. For a Tauros endgame, I didn't mention the Milotic for the Entei, which is good into it, so I'm gonna mention it. Then, uh, yeah, I put Slowbro Galar, it's very good into Comfy. You have Regenerator and Slack to stay healthy from potential Leash Seed. Also, you can use like Shell Sidearm to, pr to just more easily dispatch uh, Common Comfy. And then, last two, I put Mimic you for again the users of the, of the disc guys, and I also like the uh, the smear goal here. Either he tries standard trying to self hazards while having mimic you to just spin block if he if Nexus ever is bringing fortress because again smear goal can just use Caesar's edge and stone axe to like best Espion's magic bounce. But I wouldn't be surprised if this would be the week where we see the offensive smear goal. Because, okay, yeah, there's a ghost type, there are some tanky steel type, but that's what you could potentially make use of Smeargle for. After all, it is Terra fighting now, so you... <laughs> I know, I know Shaco King has sent the threat of body press Smeargle, which sounds stupid, but, it, I mean, this man was able to cause chaos with Cryogonal, you have to be ready for anything. Also, despite Shaco being... Uh, undefeated to this point. I'm still gonna go with him just out of the strength of his team compared to Nexus. So again, a little bit to the side of Shuckle compared to Nexus, but hopefully maybe we'll see Nexus uh, stop Shuckle's undefeated track or maybe we'll just, I don't know, maybe we'll, we'll see something scandalous happen because that's what, that's what, that's what happened the, in the previous league. And then last, to finish, the Seabat versus Druby matchup. You. So, on Seabat's side, Overquill does look pretty good with its dual side offensively. You can also just, uh, you know, throw Spike at, on top as well to support your teammates and yourself. I also like the Verisian here, actually. Like, you don't go set up, you go like four attack, you go like your stab plus stone edge plus then headbutt, and then you hit Juby's entire team. Of course, you will not drop them from full, but can definitely be a strong cleaner, especially with its speed. Only Raichu a lot outspeeds it. And then speaking of faster threat, Dog Trio does look 
like, pretty, I'm very strong. Like, you go, I would, I would see Terra ground. Like, you can just spam Earthquake. It's just Galar Articuno, which has to be worried about a rock move. And then, I like the ends. I would DNC because it's not terrible into the low kicks and it can also self hazard alongside Overquill for the rest of the team. Downflame, other fast threat that runs over Druby's team and does hit pretty hard on top of that. So, like various Young, it could be a strong revenge killer or cleaner, like game cleaner. And last, I put Gastrodon. It's good to make sure uh, Blastoise Blasto doesn't get crazy with like Shell Smash shenanigans. So yeah, and then on Drewby's side, I put Cleaver because, yeah, I, I will not, not, I will not lie. I did struggle a little bit more to decide what are the better mods on Drewby's team. I mean, I put Cleaver because that obviously is best mod. It can provide rocks for the team, which is good if to make sure if Seba doesn't run like boost on the like Tower Flame or Driblem. Clotsire is a pretty good special wall for like. DNC, or just be a wolf for, yeah, for, even for Apollyon if you go like water absorb. You can also go unaware, like, if it's not hydro pump, you can still be tanky enough to, get, to take a hit for Apollyon, but maybe you're gonna be water absorb. Then, I like the Probopass here as well, because it it's good into the Monkey Dory, as long as you don't get hit by Focus Blast. Then I put Low Kicks for its priorities. As well, that can be good to, you know, have some uh, revenge kill purpose. Just be careful about throwing around dark move versus Verizon. I mean, Verizon will get hit hard with those dark move. That's for sure. But uh, just so you, so you know, because you know, justify and everything. Next, I just put blast toys because, like I said, this struggle, but maybe some kind of physical blast toys. Or maybe we will try something funky like Shell Smash, Giga Impact, just to say I will take one of your Pokemon no matter what. Yeah, I'm going into this territory. And then last I put Typhlosion Isui. His double step is pretty good. And the speed tier is not that bad. It does take a hit from anything not named Doctor from Fall, but it will definitely get in range of anything else after. Yeah, overall, I will side more on Seabat than Druby. But maybe we'll see Juby uh, pull it up and actually get his first win. So, yeah. This was week six. Yeah, week six. We're just just a few weeks away from playoff and for the league to end. So thank you guys for watching. And on that, I will simply talk to you guys until next week when it's going to be week seven. Later! <laughs>